Hey everyone, I hope that gave you a decent understanding of how this machine now works. It was about a month ago that I put out the original build video and actually quite a bit's changed since then. Firstly, I intended on having a web server running an API that the Arduinos would be able to connect to to get all the information about the game. Uh, and I found that actually trying to get the Arduinos to continually poll a server actually didn't always end well. Sometimes it would hang for a little bit too long. And I wanted to make sure that when it came for the player to buzz in, they couldn't be waiting around for a previous request, checking to see if the game's already over or if someone else has buzzed in. So I needed to make sure that I wasn't going to be in, like blocking any calls that could have been going on. So instead, I asked on online to see what other people said. And someone said I should use WebSockets, which then open a persistent connection to the server. And then it essentially works like a chat room. So I've got an open pipe where the client will send requests to the server and the server will send requests back. But if the client decides that they want to send data to everybody, or if the server decides that everyone needs to know data, they can also broadcast that data. So things like when a player buzzes in, the server will then broadcast that the game's already been called and this was the winner. And then that way the client who buzzed in will be able to see that they won so that the light would flash and every other client would just stay, would just turn off because they weren't able to do that. Similarly, when the game starts and stops or when the round starts and stops, clients need to know because it'll stop them from buzzing in and it'll also allow like the lights and stuff on top will change depending on the state that they're in. So if we look back at the block diagram that we had in the previous video, we've now got it so that the Python script is not only controlling the buttons and the LEDs on the Raspberry Pi, but it's also connected directly to the MySQL database that's running on the Raspberry Pi and it also starts the WebSocket server. Each of the Arduinos will then connect to that WebSocket server to do all of its communications. And we also have two web pages running on the Raspberry Pi which connect to the WebSocket server via JavaScript. These do two things, a web page to extend the functionality of the lights and buttons on the control box, and a viewer page so you can hook up a TV to show what rounds we're on, what the player's scores are, and any other information we might want to show. The idea behind the web page originally was because I needed to be able to control the sound of each player's buzz in, but I couldn't do that using the control box since I've only got LEDs and buttons. I wanted to be able to log in, get more information that the game had going on, so things like where we start, where we could start and stop the round, whether or not we wanted to reset the entire game and get all the registration process to happen again, but also give players an idea of what different sounds that they could have and then when they've selected it, they can then just select that from a, from a drop-down box. And as I was working on it and added more and more functionality, I realized I could do more with this. So I decided to put in a viewer page, which could then be hooked up to a TV or something, and just run that in full screen mode. But I could show like players' scores. I could do like a, a, a round board. So if I wanted to do different rounds with different categories of questions that we could ask, it would then be shown on that display. And then also the ability to like randomize it and that kind of thing. So I added that in and then I realized that if I was going to sit with my laptop in front of me and the control box in front of me as well, I didn't want to have to keep looking at where the telly was. It might be that if the telly was behind me, I didn't want to have to keep turning around and looking back. I wanted to be able to just keep my laptop and control box in front of me with the questions and the web page that shows all the status of the game. In the end, I had to have a bit of two way communication going on. So the controller web page would send a command to the viewer web page, but rather than trying to faff with another way of communication, I just did it via the Python WebSocket server. So the controller web page would send a command such as shuffle the board, and then that would then get broadcast to all the clients. And since the viewer page was the only one that would actually understand that command, it would be the only one that would then react to it. So in that situation, I'd have all the categories available for the round on a, on a sort of three by three grid and they would then get shuffled up at the start of every round so that each player's had a different selection of rounds they could pick from. And then from there, I added the ability that we could do like a random a random round selection if a player wanted to have like like double points if you if you leave it to the computer to decide what round you get or you only get one point if you get to pick. So that sort of added a bit of an interesting element to the game where we wouldn't normally have that. But then in that situation, the viewer would then randomize what the round was and return it back to the back to the controller web page to say, I've done your randomization for you and the category ID is three or whatever that might translate to. And then from there, 
like I said, because I don't want to be turning around and looking at the TV and seeing which one it picked, it would then show it on the controller web page to say the randomized category picked was geography or history or general knowledge or whatever the rounds are, are going to end up being. And then as I was adding more and more of these features, I started to think of other things that I wanted to add. And I think in the end, the only thing that stopped what I was trying to do was the fact that I hadn't actually written a quiz at this point and it was like two days before Christmas. So I thought, fine, this is this is it. I'll, I'll design a game around the limitations of what I've got going on, but realistically I could have gone on for forever and ever. So the only other thing I added after that was I added the ability to turn off rounds. So I was thinking in my head as well, if someone were just to continually pick the same rounds over and over again, um, speaking about my own family, I know that stuff like history and sport and games, those aren't going to get picked that often, whereas things like TV and film are going to get picked time and time again. And I don't want to encourage that because I want people to be in situations where they can't necessarily answer questions, in which case other people could buzz in and then steal those points away from them. Or I just didn't want to spend forever picking thousands and thousands of film questions just for it to then turn around for me on the day and turn out that my family loves sport and games for this year. So I added an ability where I could turn off each round. So if I picked like five questions for every category and then once all those questions had been expended, I could turn them off. And then as the game went on, players would then be forced to pick rounds that they might not necessarily want. The final thing as well that I forgot to mention was I added a scoreboard in as well. So the scores are shown on the um, controller web page where I can simply just do plus or minus uh, one or two points because per game for every interaction, it's only really going to be adding one or adding two. Or in the case of gambling and stealing points, it'll be minusing one and minusing two as well. So that was just a nice, simple way to update the scores. That sends a request to the Python uh, script, which will update the database and then broadcast back what the new player's score is so the controller page will will receive that broadcast and will deal with that and then the viewer page will do the exact same thing it'll make sure that the the score is displayed correctly you can also see on the viewer page there that each player's got a name so i did also add the ability to change that because i didn't well firstly i didn't want people to just have red as their name i figured might as well show it exactly as who they actually are but it would also make it a little bit easier for me because I'm going to lose after probably an hour or two of playing this. I don't know how long the game's going to go on for, but I'm going to start to forget what colours people have got. So it's easy just to have a name. So And so with that all in mind, that was everything that you saw in the demo. I have added a little bit since, but it's it's nothing particularly important. Um, and all the code I've, I've done for it is now on GitHub. Um, I will say in advance that there is no error checking whatsoever in that code. So... The code acts like everything works perfectly and that's just the situation I was in, like I say, because it was getting really close to Christmas and I needed to actually write a quiz instead of keep working on this software. So don't hate too much when you read the code and realise that if, for example, MySQL can't connect, it will identify that it can't do it, but nothing will happen. The game will just sit there in suspension and will probably need restart, uh, restarting, but I'm hoping everything will work correctly. And then later on, I'll probably then go back and see what I can do to tweak it. But otherwise, check it out on GitHub. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, then leave a like. If you want to see more videos like this and other projects I've got coming up, then make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon to make sure you have notifications turned on. Um, but otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.